Hi everybody and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. The pattern that I'm going to be tying for you today really needs no introduction at all. It's Lee Wolf's White Wolf. This pattern falls in line with those in the Wolf series being that it's got an almost bulky hair tail, those split beautiful hair wings, it's got that gorgeous Catskill hackle and it just seems to float forever on the water. This is just an absolute fish catching pattern, hence one of the reasons why I'm sharing this, this tie with you today. There's a few flies that you could say this pattern's tied to imitate, though in my opinion it represents just so many. Some of the few that you could say you're tying it to match could be the Efron Lucon, also known as the white fly, or it could be one of the Drake patterns, such as the Isonychia. Those patterns aside, um, one of the few characteristics I really love to point out about this fly is the hackle it's tied with. The hackle I'm going to be tying it with today is its original, and it calls for a silver badger hackle. I have this silver badger that I got from Clearwater Hackle, and this is just an absolute gorgeous one. The colors just almost split between a cream and a silverish, just a beautiful looking hackle. The one thing that you really want to make sure of whenever you buy these badger hackles is that you want this black line to really just penetrate up the center. As I tie this on, watch in the video and ensure that that black is just permeating throughout the thorax of the fly. That's what you want to see, and to me, that's really just an important characteristic of this pattern. Does this badger hackle, badger hackle help it catch more fish? <laughs> I have no idea, but this is definitely the original. That's what Lee calls for, and that's what I like to tie it with. So without any further ado, I'll show you some of the materials used to tie the white wolf, and then I will get into the actual tying of this fly. Okay, let's get started on this white wolf. For starters, I have an Allen fly fishing hook. This is their D101BL dry fly hook. I use this on quite a few patterns. That BL stands for barbless, just a really sleek looking hook, perfect for this. I'm tying this on a size 12 today, though I will tie this between sizes 10 to around size, we'll say 16, occasionally an 18. For starters, I'm gonna tie in the wings. This is really one of the critical points of this pattern aside from the hackle. For the wings, I have a piece of calf body hair. There's a couple different things you want to look for whenever you buy a piece of calf body hair. For starters, whenever I grab a clump of it and hold it up, I want those tips to be relatively uniform. Second, I'm looking for, for tips, or I guess just for hair in general, that's approximately two inches long. Will it always be two inches long? Absolutely not, but if you, you shoot for that as a guide, then you will buy, we'll say, longer calf body hair. I'm just gonna grab a nice sized clump out of it. I'm gonna trim that off. After I trim that clump off, I grab it by the tips. I'm going to pull all this extra stuff out. You'll see I get just a ton of hair out. That is stuff you can use if you want to really dub the body with this hair, or you can use it for a variety of other things. But in my case, it's just stuff that really just seems to clump up the fly. So then you're going to be left with a section of hair. From that hair, I like to stack it. So I'm going to put it in my stacker. Is that essential? No but I just like to do that. I really prefer that to get these tips stacked and nice and straight. If I have it stacked, I'll pull it out so the tips are facing the front. Grab them by the tips. Again, I'm gonna grab them, come to the back, just pull out any additional stuff that's kind of made its way there. I'm gonna tie these in. I want them so they're approximately the length of the, the shank. If they're a little longer, that's okay, but I really like to keep them close to that approximate length. I'm just gonna lock them in place. Once I have a few wraps, I'm gonna really just bear down a little bit, apply a little bit more pressure, and wrap towards the tail of this fly. At that point, I might pick all that excess up and trim it out of the way. Now what I like to do with it is then just take my scissors, get that stuff relatively evened out. Then I keep my thread back there. I'm just gonna work on the transition so that whenever I tie on my tail, that material will then just transition smoothly up towards the body of the fly. Okay, I have all this stuff locked in for the most part. I'm gonna make my way back up towards these wings. And I'm gonna do a couple different things. First, I'm gonna take my fingers and just push them up. You can actually take your thumb just push back a little bit. You want to get them out of the way. You want to get them moving so that you can create just a little bit of a base of thread in there. 
So I want to wrap that thread in there because that's going to really help these wings stand straight up, giving them a real nice profile. Let me zoom out just a hair. After I have those wings standing straight up, I'm going to separate them. I'm going to pull some towards you and the other half towards me. You have to do this perfectly. No, 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 no. Don't worry about that. Just so you get an approximate separation, then I'm going to take my thread, just kind of figure out my way through. So that for the most part, they're starting to become separated. I'll show you what that looks like. Once I have that start, then I'm ready to actually go through and I'm going to start on, on the, um, the wing that's closest to the camera. I'm going to wrap parachute style just around that wing. You can put around 8 to 12 wraps just to ensure that I really have it wrapped and that it's not going anywhere. At that point, I'm going to pull it back a little bit, place a few more wraps in front of it just to ensure that it's going straight up. So you can see what that one looks like. Next, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing to the one that's closest to me. I always feel that my first few wraps are the most critical. They really help everything just catch. Okay, the same as before. Once I have that tied in, I'm just going to place a few wraps in front of it. Again, figure eight just a hair. And I'll show you what I have going on right now. So there's a look at the top. If I want to bring those in a little bit more, which I do just a hair, I can actually wrap parachute style around them and just bring them in just a hair more. Now I do have a few little outlying fibers. I'm just going to grab them with my fingers. Just pull them out of there. If you have any that are kind of jutting out around the hook, you can just take your scissors, clean that up now. Don't worry, don't you don't want to mess around with that once you have the, the tail in and once you're trying to put the hack win, it gets far too complicated. You can really just cut your thread at that point. So my recommendation is just take it the extra 30 seconds, cut all those little stragglers out of the way, just get them out of there now. That way you don't have to worry about them as the rest of this pattern goes on. Okay, next I'm gonna go back to about that transition point. My go go and grab another piece, not as bulky as before. This is going to be my tail. So just as before, I'm going to grab it, pull all this little extra fluff out of the way. Just ensure that you have enough fibers for your tail. I'm going to stack it yet again. This time I'm going to pull it out so the tips are facing the butt of the fly. And I want this approximately the same as the wings, approximately one body length. If you go a little long, you're definitely not going to get critiqued by too many guys. But I'm just going to tie it in. I might double check, make sure it's not too long. In this case, that might be just a pinch long, so I'm just going to back it up. Just a hair, and then lock it down. I'm going to lock it as I'm winding back towards just a point directly behind where the barb of the fly would be. This is barbless, so I don't have to worry about that. And then with all these little stragglers, they're all jutting to this one side. I can literally grab them, pull them back, make a nice cut, and for the most part, get them all out of there. You might have a few in there. You have a couple choices. I'm going to cut a couple of these guys out. And at that point, I'm going to wrap forward again just to really smooth this entire transition. I don't want there to be any indentation. I don't want a gap at all whenever I'm dubbing this fly. Okay, speaking of which, let's get to the dubbing of this pattern. I'm going to be using some white rabbit fur. I bought a bunch of white rabbit pelts from a craft store years ago. Um, I dyed some of them. Those that have remained white are definitely useful for this pattern. I'm just going to take some pinches. I like to dub a very tight and fine body. A lot of guys will actually use that fluff from the calf body hair and they'll tie the body, they'll dub the body out of that material. I'm not saying that's good or bad, I just choose not to. It does reduce the amount of materials that you use. However, I really just like 
using Rabbit whenever I'm, I'm dubbing, if at all possible. Rabbit and Beaver tend to be two of my favorite dubbings. When we're talking natural variety. Can I push this dubbing just a little bit up? That should be enough. I'll put a little bit more on there just in case. Okay, let's get this going. Oh, perfect. And that will bring me up to the point. I'll put just a little bit more on there. But I really don't need much more. Okay. And that will do fine. Now, my uh, the body came out really well. It's a nice tight dub body. But I'm still going to even take my scissors, just trim. I really want it looking just as compact and slim as possible. Though the White Wolf would never be defined as a slim body. In this case, I would like it as slim as possible with that dubbing. All right, now finally we're gonna add our Silver Badger Hackle. Uh, as I mentioned before, I got uh, my Badger from Clearwater Hackle. Um, it's a really beautiful piece I have right here. I stripped it off to where the black is just a hair thick and it's then evening out to where it's the same length um, the majority of the way up. What's nice about Clearwater Hackle, and at least this, this hackle that I've gotten off of them, it ties basically a size 10 and smaller. In fact, it's almost tricky at times to find size 12 um, hackle on this one, which it seems to be a complaint of many tires in general finding hackle right now. It just seems like we have a lot of really fine hackle out there in this game, which is a really great problem to have because we don't, most tires don't tend to tie that many large patterns. All right, once I have that tied in, I'm gonna to try to make approximately four turns, maybe five turns behind my wings and only a couple in front. As I wrap, I'm just gonna be winding this back and forth. You can start to see that dark thorax developing because of this, this badger. I'm now moving in front of my wings. It's one, two, I get one more up in there. I'm gonna pull everything back. I'm gonna keep my hackle straight up. As I tie it, I'm, I really don't wanna push those ones, those other hackles down. So I'm taking my, my time with my thread. I'm really just winding my thread back and forth. You might be able to see it moving on the, on the video. That's a great little tying tip there by winding your thread back and forth so you don't lock all those other hackles down. All right, I'm going to do my best, just trim away just that. Now you can see there's a few other hackles that are really just popping in the way, so I'm going to just take my left hand, pull those back as I finish off the head. Put a quick half hitch so nothing's going to lose its place. And then finally, I'll whip finish this white wolf. I'm going to put three. I typically don't use too much head cement on dry flies. For my white wolves, I do because this pattern, ooh, I lost it there. Uh, this pattern really just seems to be a pattern that you catch fish on. Whenever you're catching a lot of fish, it just seems like stuff can go wrong. And it seems like stuff already has, even though I haven't started catching fish on this yet. All right, no worries. Hasn't happened in a long time, but I should have known if it's ever going to happen, it will be while I'm videoing this. All right, let me get this other piece out of here. I do apologize for that. And I'll try it again. If anyone tells you they don't make mistakes, they are probably excellent at what they do because I know I do. All right, I'll try this. We'll finish again. It has created just a slightly larger head, which in fact probably does look better than the one I originally had. Though that was by nothing but a mistake and nothing more. Okay, with that said, and that final clipping of my thread, geez there, uh, I finally have finished this White Wolf Dry Fly Attractor Pattern. I'll zoom out just a hair so you can see this. I'll give you a 360 of it. This is just an absolute classic attractor pattern. Um, it just really is stunning with that silver badger hackle. Um, you can see that dark thorax just really just creating just that vivid presence on this pattern. You have those really beautiful white 
um, that white hair wing. Same thing with the tail. This is just a, fl a fly that just keeps on floating forever. Well, thanks for viewing this fly tying tutorial. Thanks go out to Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their D101BL dry fly hook. You can check them out at allenflyfishing.com. Thanks also to Clearwater Hackle for the use of this silver badger hackle. Uh, be sure to check out that hackle and others at clearwaterhackle.com. And as I always love to say, thank you to all of you viewing this fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks everybody for viewing this white wolf dry fly pattern.